It wasn't enough to be able to do a speed flip, write up how to do it, and make a tutorial about it. Had that been the case, this video would have come out a month ago. Instead, I went down a rabbit hole. Not only did I learn that there was more than one way to do a speed flip, but that there was such a thing as a tick perfect speed flip. Now, if you are just here for the cake, then please feel free to jump to the timestamps in the description where I explain how to do each different method. For my other masochists who want to get all the gritty tidbits, then strap in because I've dug quite a bit into this and I hope you'll enjoy it. Okay, so what in the hell does tick perfect mean? Well, we need to understand what a tick is. Physics engines and servers have something called a tick rate, meaning at what rate updates within the game are processed. In the case of Rocket League, the game runs at a tick rate of 120 hertz, which translates to 8 milliseconds per tick. For reference, the server side of Rocket League runs at a tick rate of 60 hertz per second, which is a topic that Rocket Science himself has covered on his channel. But that still doesn't explain what a tick perfect speed flip is. For that, Let's take a look at the tried and true litmus test for speed flips, Musty Speed Flip Training Pack. This is a shot, if you will, with a two second timer designed to simulate your speed to the ball on a kickoff. To take this a step further, a Bacchus Mod plugin was designed by a creator named Tiny to give you an on-screen indicator to help players train their flips even further. We'll get into each of these graphs in a little bit and what they represent, but for the tick perfect speed, we need to look at just one thing, the time to the ball. Now, if you're familiar with this pack and this plugin, then you'll have noticed this before. The standard times to the ball are 1.9917, 1.9833, and 1.9750 seconds, but there is one more level, 1.9667. Based on the tick rate of the game up till now, 1.9667 seconds appears to be the fastest time possible to the ball. Now to be transparent, these time values are not exact and in fact are rounded up and down a bit. But why the hell would you want to know any of this? If the physics engine pulls updates at 120 hertz, but the server pulls at 60, does it make any difference? Isn't just getting to the ball in under two seconds good enough? Does this drivel actually matter? I mean, kinda? Okay, in all seriousness, yes. Being to the ball first matters and every millisecond counts. Even if the servers are pulling at half the rate of the physics engine, personally what I find more valuable than any of that though is the pursuit of perfection. You tell me there's a perfect way to do something, then by god I'm gonna waste hours of my life trying to do it. But why? Besides the fact that I'm a psycho and I hyperfixate on useless things, if I have a measurable bar of success, no matter how improbable the odds of that success, I'm going to train myself against that bar. So when it came to speed flips, Yes, I can get to the ball in under 2 seconds nearly 90% of the time, but if I'm shooting for perfection, then I'm refining the process that much more. I'm aware this isn't how everyone does things, but all the same, I wanted to share it. Now then, how do you do a speed flip? There are ostensibly three main ways to do a speed flip. The traditional way, the what I like to call the keyboard and mouse way, and lastly the directional error roll way. Neither is wrong to learn, each has their own strengths and weaknesses, and it all comes down to preference, but only two of them are capable of achieving a tick perfect speed flip. Unfortunately for keyboard and mouse players, a tick perfect speed flip isn't possible due to the limitations of the binary inputs versus their analog counterparts. Regardless, it is still possible to do a speed flip on keyboard and mouse, and the method can even be emulated with a controller, which I'll show you when we get there. With all that out of the way, let's begin with the traditional method. Let's start by comparing the analog stick to that of a clock face. I found it not only represents the directions more succinctly, but helps to illustrate how fully analog this input actually is. Based on our stick's direction and angle, it can produce virtually 360 degrees of unique results. So, when flipping either to the front left or the front right, you'll want your left stick at around the 11 o'clock position for the left and the 1 o'clock position for the right. This is going to put you in that 35 to 20 degree angle for your forward diagonal flip. Next is the flip cancel. I'm going to bet this is easily the most mis-executed step in the speed flip process for a couple of reasons. One being this myth that you want to cancel your flip against the angle you flipped at. For instance, if you flip forward and left, you'd want to cancel down and to the right, or I've even seen down and to the left. Both of these are just wrong. You need to cancel your flip as straight down as possible. Rocket League does not differentiate these angles in regards to flip cancels and instead can affect how much counter torque is being applied to the cancel itself, which is why you want to pull straight down as much as possible. Otherwise, you could be getting as little as 70% counter torque if your stick is more to the left or right versus straight down. The second is the timing necessary to pull off the cancel in order to produce the proper angle and rotation for a speed flip. The most common use case for a flip cancel is when performing a half flip. What tends to cause so much frustration and confusion is the timing between the half 
half-flip cancel and the speed-flip cancel, and how vastly different they are. In a half-flip, you want to cancel the backflip halfway through the flip itself as the wheels point upwards in the air and either roll left or right to land on the ground. This delay in inputs is important because if you were to cancel your backflip at the same time you would need to for the speed flip, the nose of your car would be pointing up towards the air and disrupt the entire process. The timing you need to have on your flip cancel is almost incomprehensibly fast, but obviously not impossible. Using the Bacchus Mod Speed Flip plugin, we can see that ideally we want to perform our cancel within 50 to 75 milliseconds after our flip. For context, that's about 0.05 seconds. For me, I found that other tutorials saying you need to immediately cancel your flip doesn't quite do the justice it deserves when explaining how fast this whole process needs to be. Because this portion takes developing some twitch muscle memory, the best way I can explain what this should feel like is to press your jump to dodge forward with your stick either to the left or to the right, and as you feel your thumb depressing the jump button, quickly shift your left stick down for the cancel, hitting that straight down direction at the same time your jump button would be bottoming out. Again, this is how it feels to me, and I'm certain this might not be 100% accurate, but a lot of the mechanics in this game come down to feel, so I hope this helps to illustrate what to do. Now then, since we understand what to do, it's time to train each of these pieces before we put them all together. Before we do, however, I have one more thing I'd like you to do, so if you can, go ahead and grab your controller. Without looking at your hands, push your left stick down as straight as possible. Now, hold that in place and look down at your thumb. Is it at the 6 o'clock position or is it as close as you thought? I bring this up because our thumbs can lie to us sometimes and without realizing it, our perception of direction might not be as accurate as we might think. Since our thumbs tend to lay across the stick at a 45 degree angle, it's super common for our left stick to be more left or right than we realize, causing our flips to be off angle more often than not. A good indicator that your stick is either straight up and down is to hold it in one of those positions and drive forward. If your car doesn't veer in any direction, then you're in good shape. To start training, let's start with the flip first. Put your left stick in between the 10 to 11 o'clock position if you're an air roll left player or between the 1 to 2 o'clock position if you're an air roll right player. If you need to, I encourage looking down at your controller and confirming you're in the right place and getting a feel for where this is. Once you're there, we're going to quickly double tap our jump button. Once we've done that a few times, return your left stick to a neutral position, put your stick back to where it was, and try it again. The more you can accurately find this stick position from any other position on your stick, the more consistent you're going to be able to perform a speed flip at any given time. After you've gotten comfortable finding your flipping angle, it's time to incorporate the cancel. Like I mentioned, the motion for the cancel should feel like you're doing it between the moment you started pressing your jump to dodge and the button being fully depressed. If done correctly, your car should end up in around this position. For reference, this is what your car will do if you fail to cancel or cancel too late into the flip. Take note of this because while we're training, this visual reference can be helpful so if you don't have access to the previously mentioned Bacchus Mod plugin for the speed flip test, you can use this to make sure you're doing it correctly. Finally, once you've gotten the correct flip angle and the cancel down, this is where we begin to bring in directional air roll. If you're flipping to the left, use air roll left and use air roll right if you're flipping to the right. Do note that the goal here is to only hold air roll as needed since cancelling our flip will do most of the work for us. Air roll just helps to bring the car the rest of the way around in order to land on all four wheels. Once you've gotten all of these steps put together, it's time to take it to the speed flip test. The code for the training pack will be in the description to easy copy and paste, but for my console folks, here's the code on screen and you can pause and grab it if you need. Two very quick things to note with this training pack since you're going to be spending some time here and will almost inevitably run into one or both of these common mistakes. Number one, you need to be aware that when you both spawn into the training pack or reset the shot at any time, your car is not immediately touching the ground. You'll need to give it a moment before you take off and try to hit the ball. Number two, don't worry about using accelerate, just stick with boost. What tends to happen here is that you'll engage your accelerator before boosting and initiate the countdown timer and could set you back a tenth of a second or two, which in this case could be the difference between hitting the ball or not. The last piece of the speed flip puzzle is the offset that you need to make with your car in order to line yourself up with the ball as straight as possible before your flip. This is why I encourage resetting your left stick or driving around then forcing you to refine that proper flipping angle for the speed flip. In my case, since I use air roll left and will be flipping to the left, I first want to slightly turn my car to the right around 10 to 15 degrees before I begin jumping and flipping. As you get better at this, you'll want to start transitioning to learning how to turn in the air instead of on the ground. This way you can maintain your forward momentum as straight as possible while setting your car up for the forward dodge angle. Now for my keyboard and mouse players, since you don't have the option or the ability to flip your car at the 30 to 20 degree angle, your only option is to flip at a 45 degree angle. 
This isn't ideal, but it's still possible to do a speed flip. All the same principles of Method 1 still apply here as far as boosting and when to flip cancel. The biggest difference is the turn or adjustment you need to make with your car in order to propel that 45 degree flip towards the ball. Instead of making an adjustment of around 10 to 15 degrees, you need to be more in the 15 to 25 degree range in that adjustment. If you're curious about doing this with a controller, then here's how you can do it. Because directional air roll is applied along with the other left stick inputs, you will get a 45 degree dodge angle either left or right depending on your directional air roll by putting your left stick straight up. Rocket League reads both of these inputs and sort of cancels them out if you will. For instance, if you hold air roll left and dodge, your car will go straight left. If you only hold your left stick up, you'll dodge forward. Put them together and the result is to meet in the middle. This information is worth knowing because this is what led me to method 3 which is my preferred method of speed flipping. Referring back to the speed flip plugin, if you look at my controller overlay you'll see that I'm holding my air roll left and putting my left stick up and to the right. Now when I dodge, that aforementioned input cancel process takes place and my car flips forward and to the left at my desired flipping angle. I prefer this for a couple of reasons. One, I have less stick movement to produce the same result. I don't have to turn or adjust to the right and then immediately put my stick up and to the left for the dodge. I can simply adjust to the right, hold my air roll left, and dodge. Second, I also don't have to wait to use my air roll after the flip cancel. I can just hold down air roll left the whole time and it doesn't change or impact the process at all. Essentially, removing a handful of variables in order to recreate this mechanic as effectively and consistently as possible. At the end of the day, whichever one you choose to do is entirely up to you. Each of them are able to reach the ball before the timer runs out, and ultimately, that's the real goal here. Like I mentioned, the Tick Perfect Speed Flip is limited to either Method 1 or Method 3, so please keep that in mind if this is your goal and decide to shoot for it. Timing is everything with this mechanic, so take it one step at a time and make sure you're building it from the ground up. If you're using this plugin to train, then keep in mind that it doesn't have to be perfectly in the green in order to pass the speed check. Plenty of times my bars are in the yellow or even in the red. You can often make up for a poor angle with a good flip cancel and vice versa. It just comes down to practice and consistently. Again, if you're on PC and have access to Bacchus Mod, then I can't encourage this plugin enough. But if you're on console and don't have the option, then I hope you find the visual references in this video for flip angles and cancels to be helpful. As always, I thank you all for watching this video and I hope any and all of this information help gets you to where you want to be. I've got more Rocket League content to come, so I hope you'll subscribe and check back when that drops. But until next time, get out there and work on those speed flips.